Okay, we're going to continue our lesson on genetics, and this is the last type of problem. This deals with sex-linked traits. So just to review, we're going to talk about what a chromosome is. Um, remember, we learned about this when we talked about the cell cycle of meiosis. It's a long, continuous strand of DNA, plus the different proteins associated with it, plus RNA. Remember, homologous pairs are the ones that are the same size and the same length and they do contain the same genetic material. So what we're showing here is a karyotype. A karyotype is a chart of the metaphase chromosomes, or the homologous pairs, of a cell that are arranged by size and centromere position. So we're talking about linked genes that are genes that are carried on the same chromosomes. Okay. Now, linked genes may violate Mendel's laws because they independently assort because they may not separate during crossing over meiosis 1. Okay. Um, as far as linked genes go, they do not change position from generation to generation. So just to show you a little example of this, okay, when we do the Punnett squares for this, this is the outcome that would occur for these two types of gametes. Now, when we do the dihybrid, when we have two different ones, we do see that if A and B genes are not linked, they assort independently into gametes during meiosis. But if A and B genes are linked, they tend to assort together into gametes during meiosis. Okay, and that's when we get a little different problem. Now, the further apart two linked genes are, the more likely that they will separate during gamete formation. And that's because there's more space between the two genes. The greater the likelihood that they will be separate by crossing over. Parental gametes retain their gene combinations from the parents. Recombinant gametes result from the mixing of maternal and paternal alleles during crossing over. So recombinant means a combination. Parental allele combinations occur when crossing over fails to separate parental alleles, so they are passed together into the gametes. The recombinant allele combinations occur when crossing over separates parental alleles, mixing the maternal and the paternal alleles into new combinations. So if the genes are not linked, equal numbers of parental and recombinant allele combinations will occur in the gametes. But if the genes are linked, gametes will, parental allele combinations will occur more frequently than gametes with recombinant allele combinations. So closely linked genes yield few recombinant chromosomes and will not obtain the expected 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio. So it's very important to know the allele arrangement on the chromosome. And here's just an exampling of that. All right. We have two allele combinations are possible for a pea plant with genotype P, big P, little P, big L, little L. And we have coupling and repulsion. Alleles in coupling tend to be transmitted together. Alleles in repulsion separate with each generation. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what makes the sex of the individual. Okay, so this is going to determine if we're male or female. Okay. So the XO system is for grasshoppers, crickets, and cockroaches. The XY, okay, um, is the presence of the Y determines the sex. And this is what mammals have. This is what we have. And this is just showing you the pun and square and how this will determine the sex of the individual. Female is XX, male is XY, and when you cross that, you get a 50-50 chance of having a girl and a boy. And again, it's the male who determines the sex of the individual. So now we're going to talk about the last type of problem, which is sex-linked traits. Um, these are traits that are located on the X chromosome, so the 23rd set of chromosomes not the autosomal ones that we talked about before. 
Okay, uh, we have two big examples. That is colorblindness and hemophilia. Now it turns out that it is more common in males because they only have one X chromosome. And just so you know, colorblindness, okay, is the inability to distinguish between different colors, and there are different types of that. And hemophilia is a blood disorder. Um, they lack a clotting factor that is essential for the blood to actual clot. So they kind of bleed a little bit, a lot, a lot, actually, not a little bit, a little bit too much is what I was trying to say. So this is just showing you the genotypes and phenotypes for hemophilia. And I want you to notice that the capital H means that they're normal, and the lowercase h is that they have it. Now, a female can be a carrier because she has two X chromosomes, where the male only has one X. So if he has it, then he has the gene for colorblindness, then he will have it, where a female will need two of them. It's not impossible for a female to have it, but it's not as common. And this is just showing you a Punnett square with that. So we're crossing a normal male with a female who is a carrier for hemophilia. And this is just showing you that we have um, a 0% chance. This is a pedigree hemophilia. Again, pedigrees show you um, traits through generations. Females are circles, males are squares. Uh, shading means it has it, and if it's half shaded, it's a carrier. X inactivation occurs in mammals. Um, this is when female have females have two alleles for every gene on the X chromosome, where males only have one. Now, this inequity is balanced by turning off of one chromosome in each cell of a three-week-old embryo. And some of it's going to turn off the paternal X, and some of it's going to turn off the maternal X. So each cell really only has one functional copy of the X-linked gene in some of our cells. Okay, um, Inactivation appears randomly in cells of early embryos, and the millions of cells that descend from these form a patch of tissue that may be genetically and phenotypically different from the adjacent tissue. So it kind of gives a mosaic. And this is just showing you how that occurs. And again, this occurs early in development. Um, females are genetic mosaics for our heterozygous genes on the X chromosome. And it forms the bar bodies. This is also found in calico cats with the coloration. Okay, and It is an X-linked trait. Um, each orange patch is made up of cells descended from a cell in which the X chromosome carrying the coat color allele for black was inactivated. Each black patch is made of cells descended from a cell in which the X chromosome carrying the orange allele was turned off. Calicos are almost always female because both orange and black alleles are required to produce those mosaic patches. So the only way to have a calico male is if he was XXY, which isn't very common. Okay, so we have some chromosome abnormalities. Polyploidy is when the organism has an extra full set of chromosomes, and there are for animals and plants. Um, animals typically will have the uh, fetus die, spontaneously abort, because it's not a good thing for animals. However, plants are very common. Um, with that, I'm sorry about that, with that, they can be triploidy, which is 3N, so they have three copies of that chromosome, or tetraploidy, which is 4N. And again, polyploidy can result in an error in meiosis because it will possess an extra set. It doesn't separate as before. And again, this is a good thing. A lot of the um, fruits that we eat are polyploidy. Aneuploidy is when you either have an extra chromosome or you're missing a chromosome. And this is when um, meiosis, when the anaphase, when you're separating the homologous chromosomes in meiosis 1, they don't separate correctly. So you get one cell that is missing a chromosome and then another cell which has an extra set. So non-disjunction happens during meiosis. It's when a 
chromosome pair fails to separate and the resulting sperm or egg either has an extra copy or trisomy or it has a missing copy and it would be called monosomy. So trisomy has an extra monosomy is missing. Okay. So there are some autosomal ones. Okay. Trisomy 13, trisomy 18, trisomy 21. These all have an extra chromosome on the 13th, 18th, or 21st position. Trisomy 21 is the most common one, and that's Down syndrome. There are some um, aneuploids on the sex chromosome. Okay. Turner syndrome is XO. This is a female that has very manly characteristics. XXX is a metafemale. Um, they have limited fertility, a um, little bit of a slight um, intellectual impairment. And Kleinfelter syndrome um, is a man that has an extra X chromosome. So they do have uh, more feminine features. And then we have Jacob syndrome. The lesion is when part of the chromosome is broken off and it's missing and it can't get passed on. Um, an example of that would be cry to chat, which there's a deletion on chromosome 5 and those babies cry like a cat. Duplication is when part of the chromosome is presented twice. It's kind of repeated and that can happen with hemoglobin. Inversion is when part of a chromosome is reversed. Um, pretty much the chromosome is broken in two places and the segment that breaks apart becomes reinserted in a reverse order. And that can result in malignant tumors. And the last one to talk about is translocation. This is when non-homologs exchange parts or they combine. Okay, um, And again, this occurs when all or a piece of a chromosome becomes attached to a non-homolog. And a lot of this can increase the rate of cancer. So we are done with our different types of genetic problems. Go to the PowerPoint that shows you how to do the problems next. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.